Welcome, A Course in Miracles workbook, lesson one, nothing I see means anything. So let me stop there. You've now been traveling this journey with me for a couple of years, so I'm not going to be talking as if you're a first-time student. So if you're a first-time student, by all means, follow and participate. But I'm diving in into a very radical, non-dualistic, unapologetic way of interpreting A Course in Miracles from a complete oneness perspective, non-dual oneness perspective. And so this is, if this is the first time you're doing this lesson, what I'm about to say may be a little harsh. And it's intended exactly that way. I have to, I have to challenge your thoughts. I have to challenge your ideas, your ideologies, your beliefs, your beliefs that have become your values, that have become your customs, that have become your culture, the culture which has become the cult or your dogmatic view of the world. And dogmatic, not just because it may be sourced from religion, but sourced from spiritual dogma too. And, and please take note, spirituality today has become as dogmatic as religion. The minute one person real, self-realizes through their own inner journey and teaches it to one person, as soon as you've taught one person, there's the dogma. And if that person then markets it and shares it, and of course makes money from it, then it's dogma and you're stuck. An inward path is an inward path. Every other Every book you read, every other guru, teacher, whoever, whatever you want to call them, you know, um, friend or speaker is simply a road sign that gives you, if you're highly vigilant to the inner voice, inner calling, the void within that calls, if you're very vigilant, you will turn inwardly and use those signposts to find your way home to a place you've never left. You but travel through dreams, you know, to a place you've never left through a time that's never existed. And so nothing I see means anything means exactly what it says. Look at your hand. You know it's called a hand because you've been taught that. As a baby, when you were born and there was an object in front of you, you often slapped yourself with it because you had no idea it belonged to you. And as you grew up, that you were told you have five fingers, if you were lucky, on both hands. And so it went. And you were taught, and everything you know is because you've been taught that. If you lived on an island and there were no people and you were raised by wolves and monkeys, and um, once upon a time this big wooden log arrived with interesting floaty, floaty things floating around it, later on you realized it was called a ship, and people climbed off it, and wave their hands at you, you would have no idea what they're doing because you're running around on all fours, halfway between monkey and wolf. Some days you howl and some days you pick your nose. You have no idea what you're looking at and you'd have no idea that those human beings are you, like you, because it's the first time you would have seen them. And so everything you know today, every idea, and it's talked to Course in Miracles, everything you know about Jesus You've been taught the crucifixion, the water to wine, the walking on water, the blah, blah, blah. You can say you believe, but you don't know. There's no proof. Belief is wonderful. Faith is amazing. And faith is what makes manifest and, and really pulls in the law of reciprocity. Law of reciprocity is a high consciousness law. It's, it comes from the law of one, where what, where what one son has, everyone else has. What's given to one is given to all. You'll learn that as you go deeper into the course. Law of attraction is vibration-based. Vibration-based is illusionary-based because you vibration that is vibrated into physical matter. And whatever this is vibrating at is, is attracting. So the world you see is a manifestation of your vibrational awareness of self. And so everything you look upon has got a meaning based on what you've been taught. You've been taught what is a nice house and what is a crummy house. You've been taught what is a healthy body and a sexy body and a good body and an ugly body. You've been taught 
what is a crystal glass and that's valuable, and what is just a polystyrene cup that you get at Mackey D's, where they misspell your name on the side. You've been taught everything and you've given everything value based on what your belief system, your doctrine that you bought into, that you've agreed to, means something. So nothing you see in this room actually means anything. In actual fact, if you then go into quantum, quantum has proven that everything is little atoms vibrating so fast they don't actually exist. It's everything is just spaciousness. So the air between your hand and your face is connected to the furthest star in the outer skirts of the universe. The whole thing is space. What you once believed was blue sky, if you try and find the blue sky and you rise up in a hot air balloon, at some stage, that blue disappears into darkness and you run out of oxygen. It's just everything is not what it is. So nothing you see means anything because there is no thing to see. What you're really seeing is light filtered through the filters of ideology, beliefs, values, and your idea of self in relationship to your idea of yourself as a body-mind, as an illusory construct. Nothing has consciousness. Everything exists in the mind. What is the mind? The universe. What appears as the universe is the activity of a dreaming mind. So the universe, when, you, when it went Big Bang, and scientists have proven it, and they only argue over the date, say some 12, 12 billion years, some say 13, 14 my regression work said 16.4 billion and 3,000 people under regression all regurgitated 16.4. So I'll use that based on my reference. So I'm going to regression. That's another wonderful illusionary story we tell ourselves. So nothing you see means anything other than the meaning you give it when I'm jumping the lesson. So you can look around the world, look around the table, look around your body, look around the room. It, the whole thing, all of it means nothing. But I want us to do a little exercise. And obviously, you can do the course exercise on your own. Let's go into an awareness exercise. Let's look at the physical hand. Look at your physical hand. First level consciousness, physicality. I want you to rub your hands together. Sensation. Sensation is another level consciousness. It's a sense of Asian. Sensation. Sensation. Sensate eye on. Sensation. Sensation of I. It's the level consciousness. Take a deep breath in and out. Feel the breath flowing in, feel the breath flowing out. Second level consciousness and inner physical conscious awareness. Now become aware of my voice. Where are you hearing my voice? Where are you seeing my face? Where are you seeing this? You see, it appears like I'm on the screen. Actually, if you close my eye, your eyes, you can still hear me. Yes, Lou, because we don't see through, we don't hear through the eyes. Hang a second. You're hearing me speak and you still visualize my face. So it actually appears like you can see me inside your head. You can still see me talk and move. Uh, if you tied my hands down, I'd fall over. So, you know, little Tina, as we need to use our hands to speak. So you're aware of me in where? Is it in your brain? Where's your brain? Is it in your ears? No, you're actually aware of me in awareness. Third level consciousness, awareness. Now, what we call awareness in this world is actually consciousness. Pure awareness is aware of only what? The silent stillness of itself. So as human beings, we're unconscious, asleep. And slowly consciousness reawakens. We start to become consciously aware. Conscious awareness. And what are we consciously aware of? First, as a physicality. Second, as a breathing, sentient being. Then we become aware of awareness in which thoughts appear to exist. Because where do the thoughts come from? Ah, let's investigate. They just pop in. From where? From the abyss. What abyss? From the abyss of ideas. The abyss of ideologies, beliefs, which have given meaning and names to everything. The important thing is that 
The hand is no more important than the cup. This world is no more special or spiritual than Jupiter or Mars. The whole thing is an illusion construct. Little pieces of stone flying around a burning ball of energy. Helium, gas. And we call that the sun. And some think it's so some still think this plane is flat, and others think it's wrong, round. And, and then we think there's little spiritual places in this world, They're more spiritual than the next. The whole thing is happening in awareness. Close your eyes, imagine the world, see yourself standing on it. Imagine the heavens, see the moon, see the sun, see the planets revolving, see the whole universe. All of that is actually taking place in awareness, not in your brain. Your brain's just decoding the, the, the signals, okay, the, the vibrational signal of awareness, the vibration of it, the energy of it. It's all pure energy, light energy. Everything is energy. But while you're asleep, this energy appears to be physical. So nothing is of any any is any different to anything else. Let's move into the second lesson. You can read at your own time. Okay. Workbook lesson number two. I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. Think about spiritual, religious, good, bad, right, wrong, evil. Everybody believes they're good and everybody else is bad. You think anyone wakes up and says, today, I want to devise a way to rule the world. I think Binky said that it was a brain. Urgh, I want to be evil today. Urgh, pure evil. Huh. The very essence of you, the corrective principle in you. Know this. Inside you, there's a corrective principle. Imagine it like mer mercury. And those are, little, those are little ducks that used to swing and put a glass of water. Mercury at the bottom. That corrective principle wants to center it. The centering of that corrective principle within your awareness is pure love. And love filtered through body-mind is the goodness, is the kindness, is the essence of love, is the essence of, of compassion, the essence of empathy, to em true empathy, which is I, I feel, know, and sense you as this, this essence. Think of essence, vanilla essence, strawberry essence. The essence of God is the essence of love, and the essence of you is the same. The minute you forget that and you think, you think. The minute you go into processing through the, 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 the decoding brain device, the ideas, the ideologies, the beliefs, what you see is whatever you believe it should be based on the meaning you've given it. Now, this course is often referred to as the teachings of Jesus who channeled to Helen Schuchman. That is completely untrue. Throw that away. That is a misperceived conception. It's conceived, concepted. Helen was ready to transcend the body-mind identity. She called for help. Her idea of a higher power was a Jesus, angels, God, based on her Christian beliefs. The minute the inner dictation of the essence started, Helen gave the essence a name. And that name appeared to essence, Helen, in a way that she could relate. And so her interpretation of that essence was Jesus. Had Helen been bought, born Hindu? It would have been Vishnu. If she was Krishna, Krishna. If she was Buddhist, Buddha. And this is the one fundamental non-dualistic understanding you have to grasp. Now, most of the people that come into the course have come from a Christian background where they're transcending the dogmatic bullshit of the Christian church in its 40,000 sects throughout the world. It started as Catholicism. Yes, Catholicism was the first Christianity. And then it, it became the Protestants. They protested and it just split into, and everybody now starts a church and calls it their own. Of course, each one's right and no single Christian agrees on what the truth is. They all claim to love Jesus. They all claim to follow Jesus. They're so quick to judge. 
And of course, anything that doesn't follow the Bible is evil because the Bible was written by men inspired by God. And if you believe that, well, then you're stupid and you're asleep and you really deserve to get beaten up internally in your head often. And so you are going to bump your head because I'm sure many of them, Book of Psalms, for example, um, has beauty in it. Throw those old dogmas away. Throw away every single belief, including everything you've been taught by any single course teacher. Throw the whole fucking thing away, especially if they charged you for it. If a course teacher charges for teaching the truth, if they've turned this into a money-making scheme, then it's, then it's a scam. And I, I urge you, any teacher for God that charges for his work is doing the ego's work, and therefore is doing Satan's work. If you want to put it into happy religious terms, it's Satan's work. And there's lots of people on YouTube that believe this is the devil's work. And the devil is just the ego. And if you don't believe that, well, then good for you. The important thing is, this is free. The truth is free. It needs no marketing. You can't join me. You can't follow me. You can't do workshops. This is free. Use it, don't use it. Why am I doing this? Uh, perhaps I like the sound of my own voice. No, I really do this because by sharing my understanding, I reinforce it, reinforce it in my awareness, and I let go of the need to be this. The play of light that is playing out as Lou is OG. Lou G. <laughs> My nephew called me that. It's not a special spiritual name. Luigi is just a nickname because my little nephew couldn't say Luigi. So no special about Luigi. It's just the dude. And Muji me now. It's not Papa G. Okay. Those are nice people. This is just an apparition of madness. The minute it becomes marketing, it's gone. Do this on your own. I'm simply a signpost that will, through the grace of God in you, that which calls you, God's grace, calls you to remember yourself. The corrective principle will give you the truth. You don't need to go to seminars or workshops. And please stop going from one retreat to another. Don't waste your time going from one blah, blah, blah guru to the next. Go play. Go and do the things you love. Everything you see in this world, you've given meaning. And you've given meaning based on the value of things. That's why... A crystal glass has more value than a paper cup. An oak table has more value than a plastic table. Unless it was designed by Versace or somebody. What we call fashion or value. That's why a little piece of glass, it's apparently hardened by the earth, that once upon a time consisted of the same qualities as coal. That's more valuable than an apple. Because it lasts longer or appears to last longer. So a diamond, more valuable than an apple. And unless you're hungry. That's why if you distill certain wheat or barley or whatever rye, and you distill it over and over again, and you put it in a barrel for 24 years, and you drink a good single malt, that's why it's worth that much more than a glass of milk, unless you're a cow. All of it. How do your animals look at you? Do they respect you more because you have rank, title, drive a nice car? Does your, does your dog care when you put him on the back seat that it's made of cow leather? Everything you look upon, what is fitness, what is health, what is wealth, what is popularity, all of it. You've given meaning based on what you've been taught. And then you've rank ordered everything and then decided to discriminate for the rest of your life. You judge the rest of your life. And there's a very interesting line. Try and remain as indiscriminate as possible in selecting subjects for this application, this course. Do not concentrate on anything particular and don't attempt to include everything you see in a given area. And this is what we try and do is, as seekers is, oh, we're missing out. Best we listen to all of it and listen to that teacher. And this, 
And then we contradict ourselves because if you start following the school of Advaita Vedanta and the way they speak of consciousness and awareness, you'll get yourself lost the minute you compare it to Buddhism, who speaks of consciousness, or Course of Miracles that speaks of awareness and self and which self. And if you go to the biblical self, it's a little self, the death of the little self. What is that? Is it stay true to one path? They all head home in the same direction. Be kind to yourself. Follow one path. Walk the line. Find a teacher if you're in that way inclined. I've never found a teacher. I've assimilated information from everywhere because that's the way I work. Find the teacher and stay on that path. Add a little bit of comp complementary information from diversity of non-dual understandings. Stay true. Don't get caught in terminology. I often hear things like, which is the best course book to read? Whichever one you find first, whichever one's the cheapest. Is it the green book or the blue book with the gold rock? Don't worry about it. You could read a newspaper if you really are willing to remember Christ, self, source, God. If you're willing, it'll find you. So when you practice this exercise, be wary of how we judge. So be wary of avoiding selections by size, brightness, color, material, relative importance to you. This car is more important than my bicycle. These motorcycles are more important than my girlfriend. Oops. <laughs> my arm is more important than an apple, unless I'm hungry. Okay? So... It's taking you into non-dual space. A Course in Miracles is a non-dual understanding of self, dreaming in God. The one thing that A Course in Miracles has, which none of the non-dual schools will teach, God bless their little soul, is that very often they will allude to in their storytelling that God is dreaming. No. Absolutely fundamentally no fucking way no god does not dream so imagine for a second the eternal spaciousness of space before a universe now i'm asking you to conceptualize something which is impo impossible for an activity of the dream to conceptualize but play with me here let's play with the line imagine infinite space we imagine it was pure darkness, but darkness is just the absence of awareness. So just imagine if infinite space without any color or texture to it. Translucent, transparent, eternal light. And then boom, big bang, the universe inside it. Inside that infinite space, which is God, the spaciousness, which is source, which is divine, which is pure love. There came a tiny mad idea, and the boom is the, the content of a dreaming mind. One little cell in that infinite spaciousness dreamt a dream, and what, what appears and what we imagine. Remember, we've never seen the unit Big Bang, never seen photo, but we've seen pictures of it, which, of course, most of it is computer generated. We have color because that's what scientists do, and, and artists then, then add color. And we have these ideas of this Big Bang pictures. JPEG files and little jiffies and giffy, gif, gif, giffies or whatever they call. Gosh, technologically challenge this one. And uh, we now imagine this bah, big bang and planets and 16 billion years later, yes, planet Earth, beautiful sunsets, which is really just pollution. And um, little body minds all trying to transcend and be spiritual. You don't, please don't, don't, don't try and do anything. Don't try and awaken. You're dreaming. You're a content of the dream. You cannot awaken. That which awakens you is awakening. And it calls you as an activity to self-realize and dissolve. And that means it's going to bring about the greatest fear you have, which is, means that when the dreamer awakens, there will be no memory of you whatsoever. And the only thing greater than the fear of death to a human being is the fear of never having existed at all. And therefore, you do not understand anything you see. This hand means nothing. This world means nothing. This universe means nothing. Nothing you see means anything. 
and apply that to everything. And the minute you find yourself judging, rank ordering, oh, if you've got two things, it's a judgment. If, you, if there's 10, you rank order. All of it's a judgment. And these are not exercises in judgment. Because all of it is the realization that which judges doesn't exist. And it's judging in order to believe it does. Try to lay feelings aside. The minute you think you're spiritual because you're empathetic or you're psychic and you have strong intuition, everybody is in tuition. You're all being tutored internally from the void within, from the self, your Holy Spirit, which is the essence, your shared essence with God, is tuiting you, intuition. And the thought happens so quickly, it becomes a sensation, a sense. Senses become feelings. Feelings become emotions. And you think you're emotional. You think you're sensory as opposed to mental. Or we're all mental, completely mental. You think the intellect versus sensory, you're all of it. You're just aware of one aspect of self more than the next, little self, projection. And you've designed it that way. You've designed it in vengeance that way because you wanted to be special. And I'll tell it as a story. And God said, but you're all special. All my sons are special. And you went, no, I want to be more special. And you little prodigal son jumped on your high horse and manifested a universe. In order to prove to God, fuck you, God, I'm more special than the rest of the sonships. This universe is you dreaming son of God's big fuck you to God. And don't worry, he just laughed at you. Because you didn't have a finger, never mind a middle finger. There was no finger. And so he just laughed at your little idiosyncrasies and your little ideas and your little concepts. Just like a little five-year-old trust to impress mommy. Look, mommy, look, mommy, look what I've made. Look, mommy, look, mommy, hold my beer. Bang. Okay. So many things in this world are emotionally charged. Think about your family, the loved ones, the loved ones that have gone, the people you care about, the people that you look up to. And should anyone challenge them? Oh, emotionally charged. What does this world want? Everybody wants to be famous today. Not famous for creating something and adding value to the world. They just want to be famous for being themselves, taking pictures of themselves, being their own favorite groupie. Look at me. Look at me. Click, click, post, like, like, like. Oh, look at me. And that's why we dream, because we want to be looked at. We want to be special. We want to be known. It's built in. We want to be more special. But the corrective principle takes your specialness and bites you in the ass with it. And the minute that corrective principle bites you in the ass and you call that suffering, you get angry with God because you want to be more special. But the corrective principle will always turn you upside down and it'll seem like the world, which means nothing, which doesn't actually exist, is punishing you. And now you who wanted to be special in the world you made hate the fucking world because it's trying to victimize you. If you're feeling like a victim, it's all you. And it's a horrible thing to say to people that are being victimized and abused and hurt, that they're causing it. And we really, really, especially things like, in, in, especially in South Africa, where there's violence against women, especially with you know, spousal abuse, men abusing women, that needs to stop. It's not just the woman's fault. And, and society needs to do something about that understanding. But hey, stand up and go, no more. No. And when he's sleeping, grab a baseball bat. But that's a story for a great another day. Or you can be like Mrs. Bobbitt, a hobbit, and sort out the little elf on a shelf. Okay. Then we move into <laughs> thoughts pop in, random. Do you remember when you became aware for the first time as a child aware of yourself? Any idea, any memory of it? No people do. One day just, oh, this is a hand. Daddy, mommy, pee pee. That's it. When did that kick in? At what stage? And at what stage do you catch a thought before you engage with it and gone into the storytelling? You've never had a single thought in your life. 
yeah, we've been working for human rights our whole lives and to have women have a say and equal rights for women. And it's finally when we get to it, actually, you've never had a single thought and nothing you say actually means anything. <laughs> freedom of speech doesn't exist. The only freedom you truly have is the freedom to listen and to decide how to see it. And so when all sensations and thoughts pop up, the inner path is be aware. Be aware of them. Don't engage them. I'm going to need a story. And to whom do these thoughts appear? Where do they come from? Don't go looking for where they come from because you go and find the source of them. This is nothing. It's like trying to find the blue sky when you're hot air balloon. And eventually the blue becomes dark and you're finding it difficult to breathe. The more you try and find the source of thoughts, you realize, yeah, they come from nowhere. And yet you avoid the void. And the void is the silence and the stillness. The minute the thoughts appear and you don't like the thoughts, don't run away from them. Don't bury your head. Investigate. Look them straight on. That is what it means to challenge your shadow. Shadows, be aware. These attack thoughts. Ego always speaks first. Take note. You wake up in the morning and there's the ego. Chatter, chat, chatter. It's the same bullshit thought from the day before, the month before, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 50 years ago. Same thoughts are coming up. And what are the thoughts? When you fell asleep and forgot what you were and God's voice called you back, you saw the light and boom, the big bang, the universe. But while you lay asleep in your darkness of your dream, unaware of what you are, what you are, not who you are, because you are what? The extension of God's love. I'm alone. I'm lonely. I've been abandoned. I must have done something wrong. I'm unworthy. I've been rejected. I'm not good enough. Oh, shit. What if what created me is going to punish me? I'm going to be doomed. Something created me. That, that thing must be vengeful. Vengeful. These are thoughts you had, and you created the idea the concept of a vengeful God. Not a single thought you've had about the whole damn thing means anything. You haven't had a single thought. You're asleep. And that which appears to think is a muddled content of a nothingness, a dream. You remember the dream you had six years ago and four, six days, four months, and three weeks ago? No, you don't. Do you remember what you dreamt at 9 a.m. last night? No. Do you remember what you dreamt first thing this morning when you woke up? Maybe. How detailed is that dream? Was it a vivid dream? Were well, you astro traveling because you're special? Astro traveling. Ooh, astro. Where are you traveling to? The whole damn thing is your dream. It's all you. You can't travel anywhere. You're, you are all of it. The good, the bad. The good souls, the bad souls. The good souls and the art souls. It's all you. When you split yourself up into darkness and light, you created the good ones and the bad ones. Why? Because the good ones challenge the bad ones and the bad ones challenge the good ones. And they both drive each other insane. And through that insanity, you say, fuck God, there must be a better way. And that's what gets you to go inwards. None of the thoughts you've ever had or ever have or even having about what I'm saying right now actually mean anything. And so what's the answer to all of this? Well, you could put the blue book down now. You're done. You've now transcended the course. You have now become a guruji in the Course of Miracles. The answer, and you're not going to believe me, but you're going to get to it. Then you're going to go, fuck, you told us that earlier, is be still. Be silent. Be still. Move into silent stillness. Move into gratitude. When the thoughts appear, face them head on. You're not true. This is love. This is love hiding in plain sight. This is love trying to figure out what it is. So it manifested into this and it found its ideologies and its beliefs and its ideas and it traveled down a path only to realize after reading countless books and doing countless workshops and countless whatever, to realize, holy fuck, I actually don't know anything. Oh, that was true. Holy fuck, that's true. I don't know anything. Finally, I've said something real, something that is so close to the truth. Nothing means anything. Thoughts and words and symbols don't make anything spiritual. Don't make any symbol spiritual. Oh, look, the kundalini. Oh, look, the mandala. Oh, look, the sacred geometries. Oh, look, Kabbalah, tree of life. They were stories. 
Kabbalah was used as a story. Don't make anything special. It's all equally illusionary. The only truth, the only thing which is special is you, Holy Son of God. You are the special thought. You are the special love of God, ever extending. Not a single thought you've ever had. So don't ever beat yourself up. It's not like you are worthy. You aren't worthy of shit. You don't exist. The essence of you is perfect. The real you. Not your soul, not your spirit. The essence. Essence, spirit, same thing. The essence of you is perfect. You can't improve on this. This is an illusion. The self is perfect. You don't transcend this into, it's always there. You let go. You dissolve the filters. Transcendence is dissolving. You can't understand anything. You don't stand under a single thing. There's nothing to stand under. You don't understand anything. That which thinks it understands, understands the mechanisms of the illusion. Read a school called the universe. Section one, the mechanisms of the illusion. And when you get to the end of section one, it says the whole thing I've just said is bullshit. None of it actually exists. Now you understand the mechanisms of, of something that's never existed. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That's it. No good thoughts, no bad. Don't hang on to. Because the minute you get into good and bad, the ego traps you in the dream. You can't transcend the bad by being good. There's nothing, thing, there's no thing you can do in this world that will ever transcend the bad. There'll be never, you'll never get an end to a war in this world because this world is designed to war you to a point of fuck, there must be a better way. That's the purpose of this world given to the Holy Spirit. It takes it and says, but this is an important line. Take note of this one. It's talking about good and bad thoughts. The good thoughts are but shadows of what lies beyond. Because what it truly is, it's just pure light. But thoughts, good thoughts, are filters of what lies beyond, the light. And shadows make sight difficult. We're not talking about seeing through our eyes. We're talking about vision. The vision of the Christ, the vision of the Son of God, the self you are. Bad thoughts block sights. They don't just make it difficult and make seeing impossible. You don't want either. You don't want good thoughts and bad thoughts. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because good people think bad thoughts about themselves and good about everything else. Hence, they become victims. So let's transcend that. So thoughts about nothing mean nothing. And you're given it meaning and you replay, oh, this person hurt me. That person abandoned me. This car is important. That house. I want a house on the hill. I want this these are thoughts that you've made important for you. And by all means, go out and play and manifest, not from a place of scarcity, but from a place of abundant expression of joy. And should the house and the car and the relationship and the lover and the whatever you want come, by all means, because it becomes an expression of you. If you think anything in this world is going to make you happy, it will. Because the minute you capture it, there's a suspension of seeking. And the essence of the self rises to the surface. And the ego says, I'll appropriate that. You're happy because you own something. No, you're not. You're happy because you are happiness. The pure energy of God filtered through this body-mind appearing character in the dream is pure happiness. And the extension of happiness, joy. And what's the substrate of joy? Peace, stillness, silence. And when you have silence, which is peace, and the activity, the movement of joy, the expression, you have creation. What's creation? Love. And what are you creating? You're extending all of what you are through the joyous presence of being, the infinite lightness of beingness. God is not a being and nor are you. There's no beings in this world. It's just pure energy. The minute you subject me, God, you, and maybe interpose Jesus in between, you're out. You moved straight into the dual space. God has never said a single word. First, there was the word, and the word was God. Bullshit. That's first, there was a thought in the dream. The creation of the universe is the content of the dreamer's mind. God has got nothing to do with the universe. Shock, horrified. 
You'll get to this at the end. Why must I break it to you slowly? Let's take it to you there. Go direct. Let's go direct. If Rupert's Bar, I can take you direct. Why not through the Course of Miracles? Let's start doing this course direct. No thoughts about anyone or anything mean anything. The Course of Miracles, the book, is no different to the Bible if read from a dualistic mindset. It'll trap you in dogma. And now you've got ministers and reverends and pastors. What have they now gone and done? Misappropriated the old dogmas that don't work and shoved it into A Course in Miracles. Now they turn it into another religion and then they charge money for it. And now they're building monasteries. It's all the same bullshit replaying, just packaged under spirituality. Because the Jesus is still there. Jesus is gone 2,000 years ago, dead and buried. The essence of that man was purity. The essence, the self-shared essence, the self-same shared essence as its source. And shared essence in form took on the form of Jesus. And when the Jesus character dissolved, the shared essence was still there. And it returned to its source. But since part of it is still asleep, it couldn't let go of the idea. And so it remained as the Christ mind. The dream, a part of the dreamer's mind awoke. And it's from that essence that we are all called, called to love, called to re become a member again, remember Christ, self, and the self, which is made from the self same essence. As God remembers God. You can't remember God. It's impossible. You're a dreaming activity. It's like do the characters in your dream at night. While you dream in your bed. Unaware that you're dreaming. Remember your mother. Your father. While you're trapped in the activity of the dream. And you're imagining you someone catching fish on the ocean. You have no idea that you're anything but that person catching fish on the ocean while you dream. That activity has no awareness of that which dreamt it up. Once you awake, sit up on your bed and you oh, I had a dream. Now you remember your mother and your father. You'll never remember God. You as an activity. The essence of you always does because it's always is the self same shared essence. As God, your essential nature is godly. Holy Son of God, you're the extension of God. So if you're the extension of, you're identical to. You're not God. You're the extension of. The extension of love. You are. You exist because God extended himself. Had he not, we wouldn't exist. So the thoughts that you've ever had in your life, throw them all away. They don't mean anything. Everything you see in this universe. And please don't ever get into that. Ooh, this place is spiritual because I can feel the energy. And that place is toxic. If it's toxic, it's because you're projecting. And spiritual is because you're becoming aware of self. There's no holy place in this world. Not a single spot. Unless it's all exactly the same holiness. Because the greatest holiness in the world is when that ugliness inside dissolved. The light of awareness became aware as you abided as you resided as you sank in to the lightness of being and remembered yourself remembered your holy self your spirit which is energy your shared energy with god now that awareness is pure holy your spirit is holy the holy spirit is not an entity that descends upon you in the shape of a dove it comes in through your crown chakra and down your kundalini <laughs> get trapped inside there and then starve and die because it gets no oxygen once it's past the lungs, especially if you've been smoking. So <laughs> just throw all those silly little spiritual ideologies away. Are you getting upset? This is challenging you. It's been too. So think last when you got angry. Is it, are you getting angry with me now? Oh, this blasphemous bastard. You're not angry over what I'm saying. You're never angry for the reasons you think. So when someone's hurt you, you replay a story of the past. And if time is an illusion, a sleight of hand, and, and an apparition of light appearing as people, places, things, and events, physicality, space, time, appearing as matter, past doesn't exist. 
And you're never really upset for the reasons you think because everything that's triggered within you, if I say something and I'm reminding you of someone that once hurt you, you're actually angry because you're replaying the past. So you're never upset over the reasons you think. That's why you can sometimes snap at a child or snap at your partner that you love, because you take things out on the people closest to you, because you've been building up the tension, building up the tension, you couldn't let it go at work, because you had to behave in a certain way, and then you get home, and the one person that you're completely open with, she says, I love you, and puts her arms around you, and you snap at her. You're never angry over the reasons you think, because there's a buildup, and especially when you start to try and contain it in this illusionary construct of a body-mind, it wants to burst out, and you call it pain and suffering, and, and built up tension and ME and yuppie flu and all the stuff that we have now made up in this illusion contract because we're just taking on and absorbing so much of our own illusionary bullshit. That's all it is. So you're never really upset to because of one person or situation or event that's causing you pain. If something you believe is causing you pain because you're trapped in the past. And you're replaying it in the now. Oh, I'm in the now. I'm present in the now. You're not present anywhere. You're not in the now. The now is all there is. And now is God. And now is another word for God. So are you present? If you were, you wouldn't be listening to me. You're not present. You're attentive. Paying attention. Presence is simple awareness. No thought. No words. Silent stillness. Present. No. Attentive. Yes. What's presence? We don't understand presence. No one does. Not even the guru, not even the Ramana Maharashi, not even the Jesus Christ understood true presence. Because while you're in the dream, you can only be present of the activity, aware of the activity. And you can go into the silent stillness and abide. Are you present in the abidance? No thought? Absolutely no thought? Hmm. I don't believe you. So apply this to everything. Apply that silent stillness. And next time something pulls up and, and, and rallies you and, and, and upsets you, find the thought. And it'll be linked to a memory. Find the memory. Find the memory before the memory that pissed you off. Go to all those events that triggered up. So Go within. Go within. It's not just go within and be there. It means listen. Use your true freedom. Your true freedom of choice to choose once again. Listen. What's it bringing up in me? What emotion is rising up in me? Oh, abandonment. Oh, so when she said I'd see you later and phone me for three days, I felt abandoned. Okay, I'm not actually angry with her. I'm angry with her because I feel like I've been abandoned. This exercise... So I'm not angry at that person. I'm afraid of being abandoned for, for because abandonment means lonely. Loneliness means death. Loneliness means no one loves me. I'm all by myself. Ooh, boo. So I'm not actually angry at her or him or they or them or it or whatever. Let's get all woke now. Ooh, woke. I'm not angry. I'm angry because I feel like I'm going to, I'm afraid of being alone or lonely or or oh, I, I feel abandoned and abandoned, rejected, unworthy, you, and it doesn't feel good. Investigate. When did it start? And try and find the very first time in your life where it started. And now be grateful that you found it because you set that up. You set it up. When you project it into this form and you ask God for help, you set up this lesson. All of these lessons that repeat themselves over and over again. But do you, have you not realized by now that you're on a cycle doing the same thing over and over and over again. They just appear different. The screen seems to change. Trees, the background, the people, the buildings. It's the same damn fucking lesson over and over again. Abandonment, rejection, unworthiness, I'm not good enough. Blah, 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 blah. Same story. Find the story. Be grateful. You set that up because you got so fed up with that fucking story. Doing it again. I can't believe this is happening again. Why is this happening to me again? That was the gift. Because that's when you finally had to burn that fucking energy and you were finally found the courage to say, fuck you, God. Fuck you, God. And God just smiled at you and said, I love you. 
because it's fuck you to your own God that you made. You made this universe. You're saying fuck you to yourself and good for you because now you're finally ready to surrender to the love, the infinite lightness, the unconditionality of God's love. What is? And now you found a part. Still an illusion. Every part's an illusion. But it's an illusion that dissolves illusion. And the Course in Miracles has one path one specific doctrine which it teaches forgive so that you can be free realize everything that's happening to you is happening for you through you and all the things that seem to make you suffer were your gifts so that you could get to this point of saying enough and through the self-inquiry transcend the negative identity beliefs in this body mind and transcend it how by letting it go by dissolving the idea of yourself of unworthiness, of suffering, of struggle, of blame, all the all the problems you've had with the world, the fact that you think you're a victim. And it's not just going to go full feather silence. The Ramanas are the scarce ones. They come through at a young age, awaken. You may do that in your next incarnation, in your next illusionary storytelling, or you can transcend it in this one completely when you dissolve all body-mind identity, any desire for anything in this world, any for anything, desire for no thing at all, realizing yet you're interconnected with all of it, you're connected to all of it, and yet you want nothing from it, for it is all you, and all you want to truly do, you seek the kingdom first, you want to remember thyself, you want to remember your source, you want to remember God, why do you want to remember it, because you know the essence of it is pure joy, pure happiness, pure peace, pure unconditional love, love is the absence of of physicality, the absence of body. Love is that in which you abide, that which is God. That is love. It's not duality, you and God. Maybe one day you'll get back there. You're in there. You've never left. So you're only angry at yourself for dreaming up something which is just absurdly preposterous, but fuck funny when you start to understand the joke of it all. Because you, holy son of God, simply forgot not to laugh at your madness of creating something which has never existed. And it's over before it even realized that it's over. But you haven't forgiven yourself for dreaming it. And this is why it still appears to you like you're experiencing it. Because you haven't forgiven your dream. And that's why you're upset. And remember, no small upset, no big up. They're all the same. Anything that prevents you from being still... And abiding in the silent stillness and total gratitude and being thyself knowingly, which means being aware of just the substrata, the silence between thoughts, that silence between no thought, that no thought silence between thoughts. The longer you can extend the silence between the thoughts, the more you become aware of that awareness as the essence of what you are. Because mind is all of it. Mind and spirit are the same thing. Mind, spirit, self are the same thing. And so mind is simply awareness. And you are becoming informed, conscious of awareness. And the highest level you get to is become consciously aware of being aware. And that's as far as you go. God takes the final step. You can't get out of the dreaming. The dreamer that dreamt you up is awoken. When the alarm clock, God called God, awakens it to itself as its extension. God is not dreaming, you are. And so no forms of upsets are bigger or smaller than others. Oh, I'll, I'll hang on to this angry part and I'm going to let all those go. But this one is still justified. Ah, oh, the burning of the forest, the destroying of the animals, the abuse against whoever. Now we're going to hang on to that. We'll stay angry about this one and everything else will let go. That one will chew you up and spit you out and you'll be back here before you know it doing it all over again and you'll start with nappies and breast milk and have to go to school and all that same shit. Let it all go. Ask the memory for God in you. The memory of God in you is called Holy Spirit. It's you. Holy Spirit is you. It's not a, it's not an essence that descends upon you. It's in you. You letting go of the idea of everything else. And you ask that memory within you to return and you remember self. Remember your father. So don't, don't hang on to anything. Don't justify it. Because the minute you believe in something, you will find something to justify it. Let it all go.
So don't worry, don't get depressed, let it just sit with it, listen to it, where's it coming from, and release it. And then we move into a ask kick of a lesson. So the real reason, workbook lesson number six, that you're upset is because you think you see, and you're upset because I see something that is not there. Everything that upsets you isn't there. You don't see with your eyes. You project with your eyes. You're projecting through your eyes, through eight billion eyes. The dreamer, the essence of the sun, has dreamt you up. You are no different to a tree or Jupiter or Mars or Saturn or the universe. You're an activity in the dream. The essence of you, that which is calling you, that which makes human sentient, the essence in you, collected inside you, is spirit. And that's the only truth. And you can't see spirit. And you'll never know your spirit. You'll never be aware of your spirit. Because spirit is the awareness itself. And you, the dreaming body mind, cannot be aware of truth. And truth is completely oblivious to you. God has no idea that you exist. The dream is dreaming you up. If God knew that you as an individual existed, it would make you real and you'd be screwed. You'd be stuck in your dream. You'd be stuck. The dream would be real. Make the contents of the dream real. Make the universe real. Universe is an illusion, a sleight of hand of light, a sleight of light, sleight of hand, and, and, and playing with the light, the infinite lightness of being. And you're upset because you wanted it to be true and you wanted it to script. You scripted it to be perfect. You wanted the perfect fantasy life and it doesn't work out. Nobody has achieved their childhood dreams and even those that appeared to, the musky ones of the world, they still fuck it up. They'll fuck something up. They'll fuck their religions up and eventually none of their, of their 12 ex-wives still hate them. None of the kids want to talk to them and, and they, they have no friends and they're still lonely and they still cry in the dark. But oh, they look like heroes because they've changed the world and they've twitted this and they've scammed that. It's all the same bullshit. Okay. We're angry because no one's gonna, not everybody's gonna love you, and you're certainly not gonna love everyone else because these are fractures designed to make you angry. The script is designed to make you angry. It's the it's designed to dissolve, to disillusion your illusion. Disillusion to destroy your illusion. You become disillusioned with illusions and thus return inwards. And so you're upset because things aren't working out and the corrective principle will ensure that it doesn't. Your life will not work out according to your fantasy. Because if it did, you'd be trapped in your little Eden paradise and you wouldn't realize, son of God, you're dreaming and all 8 billion activities are just little absurd concepts you have about yourself. Because each concept will you sent off in a different direction with a different makeup, with a unique little makeup in order to try and figure out a way to be happy. There's 8 billion seekers in this world, each one, and believe it, whether they're spiritual, agnostic, agnostic, or just damn religious, whatever they are, each seeker, 8 billion of us are seeking a way to become happy. And the, the dreaming mind is hoping that one of these 8 billion little fucks running around planet Earth is going to figure out the way to be happy. Don't you think your spiritual way is more happy than the physical way or the musical way or the artistic way? Picasso fucked it up as bad as Bach did. Ooh, they were so special because they were inspired. They were as inspired as you are. They were just a little bit more egoic and they were a little bit more driven to share their ego with the world. Don't make high standards of all these wonderful people. I mean, Bach, as far as I'm concerned, is just another musician. My next door neighbor's kid sings better than Bach did. Or did he play the piano? Or was he? Who gives a fuck? Don't pay any attention. Einstein, who cares? Be thyself knowing. Everything is a pointing you in the direction. I am no... I'm not important at all. Don't ever turn me into a guru because you're going to be disappointed and disillusioned, especially when the fuck you comes out. Please don't follow me. Don't follow me. I get, oh, Lej, we miss you. You can't miss me. If you miss me, you've seen yourself as a body and you've projected me as one because I am a construct of our collective dreaming mind, the self. You can't miss someone, whether they're physical or appear to die. If you're missing them, it's because you're not seeing them. 
You've misappropriated your ego projection onto them. And now you miss them. They can't be gone. They're not gone. It's all like little, little lava lamps. Lava lamp, when it's cold, it's one big blob at the bottom. As the light of awareness lights up on it, it goes to the surface. And as it heats up, it starts to blob again. They come down to the bottom and they resurface. And they reincarnate. They're up and down and they reincarnate. And at some stage, that lava lamp becomes so hot, the whole thing goes to the top and becomes one big blob of Christ's conscious awareness. Because the light has come. And so you're upset because you want it to be real and you want it to be a perfect fantasy. Well, it's not. How many fantasy movies do you want? To, and in the end, the, the good guy and the, and the princess always walk away together happily ever after. And the next movie, the world's gone to shit again, over and over again. Good guys come and they fix everything and someone comes and fucks it all up. When are you going to realize this, this, this delusion is never going to be, oh, become Miss Universe. What do you want? What do you want when you become Miss Universe? I want world peace. <laughs> you know, you want a piece of the world. You want happy diamonds. That's what you all want. So you're angry because you see something that's not there. And you're worried about shit because you see something that's not there. And you worry that it's not going to turn out the way your fantasy. Because the older you become, the more disillusioned you become in your fantasies. And unless you find an inward path where the light of the wind that shines through, you become one of those embittered, old, miserable fucks that we have filling up the old age homes of this world. Angry, bitter, resentful, racist fuck people in this planet. Each one thinking they're right and everybody else is to blame. Don't be that. Let go. Forgive, forgive, forgive. The course gives you a tool. Forgiveness sets you free. Forgiving and receiving are one and the same thing. Forgiving and receiving are the same because you give up to yourself. You are dreaming. Take responsibility. You are the dreamer who has localized an 8 billion body minds. And this, and you appear to see the world from this locality, from this localization, and from all 8 billion. But you're unaware of the connection to the 8 billion. So you think you're separate. You think you're this. And you think you're special. You're not. No matter how spiritual you are, no matter how many degrees, no matter how many doctorates, no matter how many books you've read, no matter how psychic you are, how intuitive, how compassionate, how empathetic, it's all nonsense. These are little titles you give to a body-mind. Let it all go. I know nothing. Let go of trying to understand anything. Return to the silent stillness. Because when there's no thought, who's angry? And when there's no thought, who's worried? And when there's no thought, where's the past? And where's the pain? And where's the suffering? And if there's no thought, there's no past, there's no present, there's no future. There's just the infinite lightness of being. Abiding in the silent stillness of the self, abiding as spirit in God. God is spirit, and so are you. And so remember, upsets are all the same, whether it's a small upset or a big upset. Whether you bump your toe or you're angry at the politician, there's still Ur. And when there's Ur, there's no silent self. The grr is what stops you from being great. Be in God. Being. True being is in silence. Be in God. Being. Abide. Silent stillness. Can't be there all day long. You've got to get up. Because once that silent stillness comes, the self connects, comes into awareness, starts to pour out through the peace. Peace starts to move, becomes Movement, joyous movement, moving peace is joy. And joy wants to express the peace, the love. It is expression creation. You can't keep one anger or two or three, park those and everything else. It's going to tempt you. And until forgiveness is done, you think you're abiding. Look at me sitting in a spiritual prana position. You're holding your fingers like that. You don't know why. You've seen it in the manuals. Maybe you're doing the rosary. Maybe you're counting how many days you've got left before enlightenment. You were designed in the Western world sitting on a chair. Please don't go sit in the lotus position. It's going to fuck up your hips. Don't do that. There's no position. You don't have to face east. You don't have to breathe. We're going to learn, learn a breathing technique today. That's going to ascend us. Fuck, what a load of shit. Just breathe. Just breathe normally. Hell, light a cigarette. Breathe through that. It's all the same. Don't make anything spiritual. 
Don't make anything special. You don't need to breathe. In your silent stillness of mind, what's the purpose of focusing on your breath? To give you something to focus on. It's a practice, that's all. It's a practice. Because while you're focusing on one thing, it could be the lotus flower, it could be the falling water, it could be light music. Don't get into it. Don't get into the why. Just abide. Thoughts subside, subside to the sides. They become subsidiaries to the sides. The light of the awareness surfaces in awareness. And awareness is the self-same essence as you, which is the self-same essence as our creator, God. Be thyself knowing. And then we move on to the final lesson for today, which is I see only the past, which I touched on. So you're replaying it. It's making you angry because when did you suffer in the past? So if you're suffering now, what are you doing? You're replaying the past where? Here now in the present and what appears to be the present. But you're not in the present while you're in the past. So the rationale to this is simply it's the reason why you don't understand or know anything because you're only replaying the past and since time is an illusory sleight of hand, and there is no past. Everything you think you know comes from your belief systems, your ideas, your ideologies of the past brought into the present. Past doesn't exist. You don't know shit. Oops. <laughs> hey, I studied until I was mid 40s. I got a degree in architecture, and then it was business. And then it was marketing, and then it was psychology, and then it was a master's, and then a doctorate, and then another. What for? Because I wanted to be happy, because I wanted to be important, because I thought I was going to understand the meaning of life. Never mind all the other courses and thousands of spiritual books. I mean, I'm literally talking thousands. Four or five books a week. Wow, just assimilating information. Wow, Ooh, understood Kabbalah, sacred geometries. What? What? And still, I was so angry at the world. Why do bad things happen to me? I'm a good guy. I want to be. I'm sure, my ex-wife thinks I'm a prick. Didn't love her then they went. She needed to be loved. So as much as I was trying to love my ex-wife, she needed diamonds. I wanted to give quality time. <laughs> you don't buy me anything. Giving you a house, giving you a car. But I want, I want words of affirmation. Hmm? I love you. It's not good enough. Tell me I'm a princess. But you're not a princess. But I want to imagine I am. Okay. <laughs> if time is an illusion and everything you know, you learned in the past, which doesn't exist, then you don't know shit. So you're angry over the fact you can't see anything, that nothing actually exists. And everything you think you see is actually the past because the dream is over before it even started. And it's an illusionary construct of a dreaming mind that hasn't forgiven itself. And so what do you actually see? Nothing. And you're angry over nothing because nothing exists. In the first seven lessons, we've just divine, defined the non-dual understanding. Now, there's some group in miracles that say you can't talk about non-duality in Course in Miracles. Well, I fucking do. And I love it because it is non-dual. The truth is non-dual. It's oneness at one minute is non-duality. So let's read this. I see only the past. This, is, this idea is particularly difficult to believe at first. Yet it is the rationale for all the preceding ones. It is the reason. It's highlighted in blue like the blue sky, it is the reason why nothing that you see means anything. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning it has for you, because then it can hang you on to your illusionary construct of the past. And it's really the reason why you don't understand anything, because the past doesn't exist, and so there's nothing to stand under. It is the reason why your thoughts don't mean anything, because they're all tied to an illusionary past that doesn't exist. It's the reason why you're never upset over the reason you think. It's the reason why we take photographs so we can prove to ourselves the past does exist. Look at me, how sexy I was when I was the karate kid. Look at my six pack. Oops. It is the reason why you're upset because you see, actually, you don't see anything that's not there. You don't see anything. There's nothing there. There's only here now. Now, here, nowhere. 
and the infinite lightness of being. And old ideas of time are very difficult to change because we live by the clock. Or slightly, some of us can't help ourselves but being late. You know, especially if you're African or Greek, Portuguese, Spanish, Italians, they struggle with time because, hey, mañana, tomorrow's another day. Like, we're so well, you know, like, time doesn't exist. Let's just have another glass of wine. Well, the wine doesn't exist too, so shut up and get home. Because everything you believe is rooted in time. All of it, whether you believe you live in time or not. And it depends on your not learning these new ideas about what time is. Yet that is precisely why you need new ideas about time. And they too shall pass. We'll let go of those ideas in time, but not in eternity, because in an eternity, there is no idea. There's just what is. And what is, is the infinite likeness of being. What appears in this world is what is. What is as the content of the dream. Appearing in the dreamer's mind, in his awareness, as he's becoming more and more conscious that he's dreaming, he's becoming consciously aware that he's dreaming. I'm using a masculine. She's becoming more, to use the feminine too, she's becoming more and more aware that she's consciously aware of herself, that these characters that appear to be the universe and people running around the planet Earth causing chaos of a hell are actually her activities. And as she, the Holy Son, daughter of God, awakens, she awakens to self as that which is the extension of God's love. So what is, is the illusion. Appearing in what is God. Just this. So think, let's go back to the, the cup. Is it a crystal glass or is it a paper cup? Why do you believe crystal is good? Because mommy said so. And why did mommy say Because she said it's expensive. Why does she say Because granny said so. Because her mother said so. Because it comes from so-and-so and it's such-and-such comes from Switzerland. Ooh, Swiss, Swiss crystal. Yeah, the, the Swiss are just happy with paper cups, or environmentally friendly, because it's, it's biodegradable paper cups. They're more advanced. And so you've given everything meaning. What do you know about anything other than what you've been told? And based on what you were told, the rest of your life was a bunch of experiences. And now you stuck your suffering trying to find a way to be happy, Recalling a whole lot of illusionary constructual beliefs that never really were real. And now you know shit, and I know shit. No one knows anything but shit. But shit's good when you realize there is no shit. Because the shit is the shit when you realize what is, is happening in that which is, and that which is, is true. So let's forget about pencils in the past and the shoes and hands and face and realize, be still and know I am. This is a whole new way to look at non-duality, a course in miracles. And don't get stuck on things. Don't linger. Let it go. Look for, why has this happened? What is it trying to show me? Listen. True liberty, true freedom only exists in awareness. While you're Evolving your consciousness as you are reawakening your consciousness as you're in physical form. There is no freedom here. None whatsoever. You can have all the money in the world. You can live on an island. You're not free. You still need air to breathe. Freedom is decision making. Choose again. Choose again to abide in the silent stillness. Devotion. Devotion to God means devotion to the silent stillness, abiding in gratitude. You want to praise God? Move into gratitude. God doesn't need your worship, your hallelujahs, your love songs, your prayers. That's what you do for yourself. Make yourself feel good about yourself. No different to singing a song or dancing the tango, playing the piano. It's all the same bullshit. God wants you to experience, and that's a concession word, concessionary word. Experience yourself as his self, same essence. And the only way you can do that is silence, stillness, gratitude. Abide and ask to be shown, ask to be filled from within, from the void within, the void that you're so afraid to sink into because you think it's empty. And the void is full of self, the self same essence as God's self. Return to the silence, thoughts, gratitude, and it will pour through you 
and you'll move into this world again and pour yourself passionately as the light of the world. And what are you going to do? Whatever you love to do. But I don't know what I love. Abide and it will be shown. Don't believe a single word I've told you. Don't believe anybody. Find your own way. I'm simply a rude signpost. It's going to possibly take you to the self-realization. No one can awaken. There's no one to awaken. The dreaming mind's awakening. What you're going to do is get rid of the obstacles to this dreaming mind. Obstacles to peace. You're going to get rid of body-mind identity. And when you're finally ready to let go, no more attachment to anything in this world. You can finally one day put this body down and the essence of you returns to the Christ mind where you would never have existed. No memory of you whatsoever. No history, no past, no nothing, no world. You just remember the essence. You remember the self and you remember the love of God you are. Be blessed. And we continue again in a week's time. And I will, um, I'll post it on, on WhatsApp and on Facebook when we do the next one. Go with God, go in peace. Goodbye.